In this video, we will discuss insulin tolerance test. Welcome to our channel, Internal Medicine Made Easy, the online learning platform that provides medical education to healthcare professionals and students to improve their clinical skill and help them in their studies, courses, careers, and research. The insulin tolerance test is the gold standard test for assessing the integrity of the hypothalamo-pituitary adrenal axis. Stress in this case, hypoglycemia, leads to the secretion of the hypothalamic hormones, growth hormone releasing hormone and corticotrophin releasing hormone, which in turn stimulate the pituitary to produce growth hormone and ACTH. ACTH production is assessed by the measurement of adrenal cortisol production. This test is dangerous and it relies on the induction of sym symptomatic hypoglycemia, which must be treated immediately if the symptoms become severe. Cautions This test should not be carried out on patients with a history of epilepsy or cardiac arrhythmias with severe panhypopituitarism or hypoadrenalism with a glycogen storage disorder. The test should be used with particular caution in young children as the symptoms of hypoglycemia may be difficult to detect. A doctor must be present throughout this test with the patient being closely monitored for symptoms of hypoglycemia which may require treatment. Preparation The patient must be fasted overnight but 4 hours for infants although drinks of water are allowed. Ensure that glucose 10% dextrose and hydrocortisone are available for IV injection if necessary. A glucose drink must be available. This may be around 40 grams of dextrose powder dissolved in approximately half a glass of squash. Alternatively, polycal or rapilose can be administered. Child must remain on the ward and eat for at least an hour after the test before the cannula is removed and the patient discharged. Protocol Start the test between 8 and 9 a.m. With the patient, insert an indwelling cannula and take a basal blood sample for glucose, growth hormone and cortisol. Wait 30 minutes before taking the baseline sample for glucose, growth hormone and cortisol as cannulation may cause growth hormone to rise. The patient should be resting throughout the test. Check glucose level by meter. If glucose is less than 3.5 millimole per liter, do not administer insulin. If glucose level is between 3.5 to 4.5 millimoles per liter, then administer half the dose of insulin. And if glucose is more than 4.5 millimoles per, per liter, then continue with the test as indicated. Dilute soluble insulin with normal saline to give a solution containing 1 unit per ml. Give an IV dose of 0.1 units per kg body weight. This dose should be reduced to 0.05 units per kg in patients who might be unduly sensitive to insulin, such as patients with suspected hypopituitarism, severe malnutrition, or those with a baseline blood glucose between 3.5 and 4.5 millimoles per liter. Monitor blood glucose closely until adequate hypoglycemia has been established or the child shows signs of hypoglycemia like sweating or drowsiness. Administer glucose drink of 40 grams of dextrose powder dissolve, uh, dissolved in approximately half a glass of squash, polycal or pillows can be administered. If there are more severe symptoms of hypoglycemia like impaired consciousness, 
IV glucose may be required. Take further blood samples for glucose, growth hormone, and cortisol at 15, 30, 60, and 90 minutes post-insulin administration. Remember to check the child's glucose level by meter and the responsiveness at every sample. These are the time points in summary. Interpretation is only possible if adequate hypoglycemia has been achieved. If the laboratory plasma glucose falls to 2.2 millimoles per liter or less, the post stress should be sufficient to stimulate a plasma growth hormone concentration exceeding 7 micrograms per liter. Hypoglycemia of this magnitude should also cause an increase in the plasma cortisol to, con uh, to concentrations exceeding 430 nanomoles per liter.